Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of DC Stargirl. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Obviously, picking up in the aftermath of last episode, I do love the whole, um... I'm too sexy playing and it's um, their dog just like running amok in the house. And then at one point he's about to piss on the crate that the cosmic staff is in. But it's definitely feeling better. So it starts chasing after. And I just love that both of them are just standing there at attention when everyone comes to the door. And it's like, oh, someone's feeling better. So now everyone's, you know, it's it's to pick up the pieces. Everyone's getting ready, um, you know, squaring up for the big battle ahead. Obviously, the awkwardness of Cindy being there, you know. I, lo- I think it's actually really adorable, like, like you know, Courtney and her mom, you know, Barbara's hugging her. She's like, oh, I, I lost you. And she's like, Ehm. it's, it's kind of cool, but she kind of pulled away because I, I think it's like, right, we can't be all, like, you know, in a family moment right now in front of one of our supervillains, you know. Uh, current allies, previous villain, you know, so... But Cindy's, like, trying to be on her best behavior. And I love that, like, Barbara's like, that was really, really, really bad. And I'm like... It's super adorable that Barbara... It's, I love that. Because she's like, oh, like, that was a really, really, really bad thing to do, Cindy, the whole, like... Because it's like, yeah, you are the reason we are here because you're the one that got eclipsed. And she's like, okay, I'll admit it. I, I made a whoops. And it's like, this is bigger than an oops, you know? Um, even later on, she's sitting there, like, eating, and she's like, oh, this is great, Mrs. Whitmore. It's like... And Barbara's just kind of like... <laughs> Uh, it's, it's such an awkward situation to be in. Mike's off looking for um, Thunderbolt, which he ends up tracking down uh, Jakeem. And it's like, yeah, apparently, like, yeah, things have kind of gotten out of control. He said he was hungry. And then there was the giant hamburger, which was scary. And he's like, I, I was still hungry. So I was like, I want Chinese food. And it's like, oh, you idiot. He probably actually went to China. How long has it been going? Uh, three or four hours? Uh, okay. And so it's like, he talks to Jakeem about everything. It's like, do you, it's like, the reason why you had Thunderbolt in the first place is I wished it away. He's like, well, why'd you do it? He's like, I don't know. I just said, I wish that it was in better hands. And he's like, my hands were better hands? He's like, I don't know. Thunderbolt probably read my mind. And he's like, why would I I'd be better hands? He's like, I don't know. I mean, he's like, well, you are more organized. And you actually get to your route early, which people like. But he's like, that's it. It's not the biggest. The bar is pretty low. So it's not like you being a little higher than me or me thinking you're better than me. It's not that like big of a uh, difference. But then I love that he's like, um, but he's like, Regardless, you want to keep the fit pin, you can. Because whether Mike realizes it or not, maybe subconsciously on some level, he knew that Jakeem was like him. Uh, because maybe Mike kind of felt like, regardless of the JSA situation, he has a lot of people on his side. Or maybe Jakeem doesn't, and he knows that. Um, but um, I think for him, it's just like he sees a lot. Because like that's the reason why Thunderbolt latches on to people who are lonely, who don't, he's like, yeah, I don't, I haven't really had any friends in a long time. And I think it's like, right, you want to keep the pin, you can, but you got to work together. Like you got to help me save the world. Cause he's like, you know what the justice society of America is? He's like, is that the boy scouts? Cause I'm not good at tying knots. He's just like, okay. But then his sister comes in. It's like, dad says, you have to, you have to do the dishes. I can't right now. I got to save the world. Dad, you can't won't do the dish. Okay. 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 And then she's like losers. I love that. They're just like, his sister is pure evil, just because, like, yeah, she's the main villain of the episode. I love it. Um, so she is asking, like, so Mike, can you help me wash dishes then so we could go save the world? Just Mike's like, oh, the things I do, you know, he doesn't say it, but just that. It's like, oh, almost that courage to cowardly doll thing. Like, oh, the things I do for love. It's like, oh, the things I do to try and save the world. Uh, so I love, and she's so evil, she brings even more dishes later on. She's just kind of like, huh, looking at them, and it's just kind of like, Mike's looking back at you, Kim, and she's like, I don't know, bro. <laughs> So I love that that's the shenanigans going on that part. We still don't know if Thunderbolt made it back or not, but they're going to need him for the upcoming battle. Uh, you have Dr. Midnight and Beth meeting officially. I mean, to be fair, it's like, well, she had Chuck last season, but now it's like, oh. And it, it's such an interesting thing because she's in that rare condition where she gets to meet her predecessor. Um, I mean, because obviously Rick's dad was the previous hour man, but like he didn't know that aspect about that he just knew his dad he didn't know his dad was a superhero so but no one's other than that like no one's really met their predecessor like that you know i think even Je- uh jenny like obviously she didn't know her dad was green lantern so 
it's interesting, like, yeah, she's the only one to ever really get to, and, you know, before she just had the AI system with Chuck, now it's like, no, I get to meet Chuck, and uh, now he gets the, and I'm sure Beth is going to use this going forward, but um, she's probably going to design some glasses, because uh, Dr. Chuck designed some shades, so that when he's in cognito mode, when he, like, that way, you don't draw too much attention wearing the goggles all the time, so, but, so his goggles are linked to the, the shades that he's wearing, but I'm sure Beth probably won't make shades, she'll probably make standard glasses, that way she'll always have, like, it ready, and you know, ready, ready to, you know, for action anytime, and then when the battle comes, like, ready to shift into, uh, Dr. Midnight mode, and just put on her goggles along with her costume, but, every day-to-day -day basis she can probably just wear glasses so they're probably setting that up once again those goggles draw a lot of attention but um other than that everyone is trying to uh piece the uh, jsa bat together first and foremost you have courtney going to visit um yolanda and she's telling you know she wants to talk to yolanda it's like you're not the only member of the uh, jsa that's killed someone and it's like what it's like yeah, uh, the uh, JSM members, including the previous Wildcat, Ted Grant, he killed um, Bruce Gordon. And it's like, I know it's a lot, but... And at first, Yolanda's like, obviously, like, what, you think it's going to make me feel better? She's like, it's actually worse, because now it's like, you know, knowing, like, I'm definitely not putting on that costume, because that costume has killed people twice now. But, like, Courtney just wanted Yolanda to feel like, right, you're not going through this alone because the fact is the JSA did it, too. And it's like, I mean, obviously, like, they had to live that with that guilt for the rest of their lives. Um, but for Yolanda, it's like, because she, one of the things she felt guilty about was thinking, like, oh, I stained what Wildcat represented. But Wildcat did that as well. But it doesn't make it any better. It doesn't alleviate her guilt. But it's just that, you know, for Courtney, it's like, I miss my best friend. And... and we need all hands on deck in this battle, and I, I, I wouldn't want to go into battle without my best friend, but it wasn't enough. But you see Court on uh, uh, Cindy nearby looking kind of like sad about it, and so you immediately could tell what Cindy was going to do. I was just curious about what her approach was going to be, and so she busts into Yolanda's place and being like, oh yeah, so saying all the things she needed to trigger and like set Yolanda off, first and foremost, like, oh yeah, don't need any weaklings like you we. It's like, oh yeah, me and Courtney, we're like working together to go down. She's like, no, Courtney would never work with you. It's like, <laughs> if you believe so. Also, you know, those photos, that wasn't Henry that uh, sent them. It was me, which I think the audience knew that. It was pretty clear that it was Cindy that did it. But I think Henry never fought against it too much because... Well, I think he did try to say it wasn't him at some point in time, but I think he also admitted his guilt because I think he did share it with other, I think he probably showed off like the pictures he got from Yolanda. So I think for him, it wasn't like, regardless if I'm not the one who put it out there while during her, her speech, it's still the situation of I'm the one that, um, I'm the one that, um, set it in motion. I, I, I wasn't guilt free of this. So maybe that's what it is. His, his regret about what happened. Like he still played his own role in it, I think. And, um, but obviously I think like Cindy had, like, I think after her adventure, uh, in, um, I think of her adventure in, well, adventures, like her, her being trapped in a prison that was the Shadowlands. I think it, it did something to her because it's like, because also like she has killed people too. Like she's got regrets. Like the biggest one is her mom. Like she doesn't regret killing her dad because her dad's the reason why like she accidentally killed her mom because he made her into what she is. So there's dad, but she accidentally killed her mom. The one person in the world she cared about, you know, and every stepmother she got close to because she was trying to fill that void of like. You know, the mother, like, that she... It was tr trying to fill that void of the mother that she lost. And so, I think some level of that, plus her own guilt about... Like, maybe being inside the Shadowlands did make her confront a lot of stuff she felt bad about. We didn't get to see it. It was mainly stuff about her dad and her mom. But there might have been other elements, like the Yolanda and Henry thing as well, that um, really, like, set the tone for her. So, maybe it made her... Maybe that's even more so why she did what she did. But it was just to egg Yolanda on because it did work because Yolanda comes back being like, I'm, I'm, how could you work with Cindy? It's like, well, it's not like, it's not like a, yeah, we're kind of working together for the sake of, it's like, yeah, you know, the moment this is all done, she'll just stab you in the back, right? I'm only coming back to protect everyone from like her. So that's it. The moment she's, go, Eclipso's going and Cindy's going, I'm going, okay? And then she's like, okay, yeah, okay. She says, where's my costume? You can see Courtney so happy. It's like, yeah, hey, I got my best friend back, dude. Yeah, I'm ready to go into this battle with you. 
But at the same time, Courtney had to talk to her mom, too, after what she saw in the Shadowlands. And it's like, you said something. She's like, you know, that was a club so right? It's like, yeah, but she's like, I didn't want there to be anything between us. Because she's like, the fact is, like, was it hard raising me? She's like, yeah, it was sometimes. But, you know, you know, it's understandable for it to be hard, you know, as a single parent. But she's like, you could have had a whole career. It's like, I do have a career. And she's like, you could have so much more. It's like, maybe I could, but, you know... Obviously, it's all worthwhile for what uh, Courtney's brought into her life, and you know, and because she's like, she knows that um, she doesn't like the fact is that Courtney has to do this, uh, has to go up against someone like a Klepso, but she knows that at the end of the day, Courtney's the only one that can, and that is the important thing is that because even um, even um. Dr. Chuck was saying that to beat back the darkness because he isn't in a vessel, light can work against him because he is just pure darkness right now. Meaning, I mean, the cosmic staff can hurt him, but he can hurt the cosmic staff in uh, return. I would because I was I brought it up last episode and we do immediately answer like what Jenny and Beth encountered. It wasn't full blown eclipse. So it was a, a residue. And because of it, you know, it's like it connects. um it connected uh, Jenny to uh, Eclipse. So, and she, you know, because he looks at like a, a model of the town. And he's like, "You can you see me? I can see you. Um, and I guess that's kind of like his lay of the lands. I guess it's like, right, it gives him a visualization of, you know, the town that he's like slowly but surely like um, corrupting and letting his powers kind of run it's power of like fear and stuff run through. Um, on the other side of things, we have things with uh, Rick because we'll circle back to the Jenny thing um, at the end. But with uh, Rick, uh, obviously you had Pat going to uh, visit his uncle, and he's like, "Hey, I need you to drop the charges because Rick is a good kid. He made a big mistake, but you don't. This thing could ruin his entire life." And he's like, "I know this won't make a lot of sense, but a lot of people will suffer if Rick isn't you know able to help." And so I was like, I need you to drop the charges, you know? And so, and he writes, his uncle writes, go to hell. He's like, I was wondering, like, are you going to be a piece of crap about this? Oh yeah, you're doubling down on it being a piece of crap. I mean, he was already a terrible person. Like now he has an ex, like he was already like crappy towards Rick anyway. So now this just gives him even more ammunition and reason to. And I love that like, Pat was just kind of like, you were supposed to take care of him. Rex left him in your care but you did the opposite of that, didn't you? It's like, that's what you do. Like, you know, you find someone weak and you take advantage of them. A kid, a waitress, Rick. And it's like, and I love that Pat was getting really like serious. He was like, you know, when I look at like someone like you, it reminds me of who I would like me in the army when I encounter people like you. And then he was also like, um, it reminds me of something that's still true to me to this day. Because he was like, you're a bad guy. But he was like, but I got a little bad in me too. I was like, ooh. And he's like locking the door and he's closing the blinds. And Rick's uncle's like freaking out. I was like, what did Pat do to him? And it's like, yo. Because maybe that's also why Pat didn't want to do the Bruce Gordon thing. Because he wanted to try and find another way. But I think for him, it probably was a situation of like, Pat knows there's bad in him. And he tries not to give in to it. Um, and that's the interesting and complicated conversation of doing bad for good. And so the charges get, did get dropped against Rick. He's like, my uncle dropped the charges. What happened? He's like, I don't know. So I don't know whether Rick knows that Pat probably had some part to play in it. But, um, regardless, um, we do see later on that obviously, uh, the, uh, we see Stripe getting worked on some final touches and as well as Rick trying to repair the um, hourglass. I'm pretty sure uh, Grundy's probably going to show up next episode, too, just to, like, help his buddy out. Like, they, they will probably have Grundy on this side. They'll probably have two heavy hitters with Stripe and Grundy, but we'll see. Um, I'm wondering... Uh, I mean, he's just following his father's note, because I was wondering would it be possible. I was like, yeah, um, I wonder will he make any improvements on it, or will it just be exactly the same? I'm sure, like, Rick might put his own touch to it. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it'll be exactly the same. Um... But aside from all that, obviously there's a conversation between Courtney and uh, Cindy where Cindy's talking about, yeah, she pl how she played um, 
played Yolanda like a fiddle. It's like, I know why you did what you did. It's like, yeah, uh, she has a, talks about the fact that Yolanda has a rage inside of her and she gives into it. And I guess it's part of like, kind of a trait that's kind of maybe similar to, you know, the wild, the, the nature of what Wildcat is. It's like, she gives into that like darkness a little bit, you know? Because everyone has their darkness and it's like, against this enemy, you're going to have to give into yours. Like, no more like, you're going to have to dig deep into that darkness to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this, uh, with uh, Eclipso. And you're going to have to do that if you want to beat him. Like, sometimes with some bad guys, you have to be a little bad to fight. Once again, do a little bad, do bad to do good. So, but it seems like that's actually the worst device to give Courtney because it turns out that is exactly what Eclipso wants. It's what I thought. He wants her as a host. Now, what the ins and outs of that are, is it because she is Stargirl, because she was chosen by the, the staff chose her, that it's like, right, there's such a light, a radiance in you, and you can corrupt that radiance. If that radiance can be turned into darkness, it'll be some of the... Sh because I think tapping into the darkness in people is one thing and growing it, but uh, tapping into the... Like, corrupting the light in someone is completely... Dead. Or maybe it's just because the brighter the light is in Courtney, the darker the shadows in her that shine as well. So maybe that's the flip side of whatever the case may be. He's trying to find the perfect host. And if he can possess Courtney, it seems like he'll also be able to corrupt the, um, the staff in the same manner. So that's the whole point because we see that Jenny's... Because I was worried she was getting corrupted, but the rain gave her access by like connecting her in Eclipso's mind. So she sees the future of everyone... Um, dead by Eclipso's hands, but then finds out his ultimate plan is to possess Courtney, because we see it at the end. Because with a human body like that, with a cosmic staff under his control, he is, and he talks about it when Chuck and Beth make it there, and he's like, oh, no, I'm glad you called everyone, because I need everyone here, because it's going to be that much easier, to corrupt, because he needs to probably kill everyone, so that, or, or hurt everyone near her, because he's already, you know, because he made such a point of it last episode to get Courtney angry. He needs her to give into her hate, her anger. And once that consumes her, you know, he plans on hurting everyone near her so he can, like, everyone being there is going to be the perfect ammunition to make her slip into her darkness. Um, but it's like, yeah, because that's why he's waited to the very last moment to go after her. Why he's chosen to attack literally everyone around her first because he needs her angry. He needs her blinded by her rage to, you know. So once again, Cindy's advice is the worst because just like Chuck was saying, it's like turn away from the darkness, like face towards the light. And because Courtney's light is the only thing that can stop him at this point. So it is a situation of... If Courtney gives in to like her anger, submerges herself in that darkness, gets consumed by it, he wins. But if she can, if she can channel that light, she can. You know, age old tale of light versus darkness. Um, but he plans. He's like, oh, I'll consume everyone, and I will become your god. It's like, ooh. So obviously, a lot of like I said, this is a lot of prep for the next episode, which is the season finale. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how the showdown with Eclipso well goes down. Um, will everyone survive? I don't know. Um, what surprises await us? Like who's going to who's going to play what role in this battle? What's going to happen? It's definitely once again we get we got our forces together. You know, Jenny's with the ring. Like hopefully she will be up to. Strange, she knows what's coming. Granted, everyone probably left her at the house, and you know, but she'll probably have to show up to try and stop things from going down. You have Jakeem and Mike with Thunderbolt, so uh, it's it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this ultimately plays out, and even when it plays out, what the aftermath of it's going to look like. It's definitely going to be interesting. I'm excited to see what the season finale has in store for us. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.